Welcome to another Online Business Realm video. If you haven't already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest things that we have happening here on the channel. So today's video is the first video in our Freedom Fridays series. We are going to be every Friday showing you guys videos that are going to be geared in helping you become free from a 9 to 5 job. If that's what you have right now, and maybe you're not happy with the job, or maybe you just want to get some other type of fulfillment out of your life, and you believe you can do that in the online business space, then we want to help you to do that. So today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about a true story that involves me, and it's how going to a football game freed me from my 9 to 5 job. It's a true story. It sounds kind of crazy. But back in 2010, I'm a huge Atlanta Falcons fan, and I wanted to go to a Atlanta Falcons playoff game against the Green Bay Packers. Now, if you know anything about football, you'll know that that was a disastrous game for the Falcons and that the Packers would not only beat us, but go on to win the Super Bowl that year. But the story doesn't really necessarily involve the game itself. It involved me trying to go to the game. So I didn't have a lot of money back then, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to find some way to go to the game. So I bought some tickets with some money that I didn't really even have. Though There were some more expensive tickets than I could afford, and I took those tickets, and I turned and I sold them. I sold them on Craigslist, and what happened is, is through that process, I was able to to discover a whole industry online that I was able to get into. So let me give you a little bit more about my situation at the time. I had just quit a job that I really loved for a long time, and I was working at a car wash for $8 an hour. I missed my old job, but yet I tried to embrace this new job at the car wash. And I was the assistant manager there, and things were going pretty good for me. My best friend worked with me there. He was the manager. And what happened is my friend decided that he wanted to go into his own business. And so he did his endeavor and started making money pretty quickly and left the car wash. And then I was left basically there by myself. And there were other people that I, I worked with that I did like, but I missed having my good friend there. And things just weren't the same after that. But not only was I missing my friend at work, I'm also sitting there looking at him become very successful while I am still working at a car wash. I still have to be there at a certain time every day. I still have to do anything that I'm told to do. I'm basically making money for someone else. It doesn't matter how great of a job that I did, unless I were to get a promotion or a raise, Like I'm not going to get more money at that job because I'm doing a better job. The only people who are making more money are the owners of the car wash. So I got along with the people I worked with. I didn't hate my job per se. I didn't hate every single little thing that I had to do, but I just wanted more out of life. I wanted more out of life than working at a car wash. So what I decided to do is, like my friend, I decided to start looking for a way out, not a, a way to jump to another job, but a way out of the rat race, a, a way out of a standard nine to five job where other people are making money off of my hard work. So as I was looking for the tickets for the, for the football game, and I eventually found some and sold them, I discovered a method that ticket sellers were using. And you can say that this was an experience in reverse engineering. So reverse engineering is when you look at a product or a website or a service and you basically work backwards to figure out how they are doing it. So what happened with me is I was on Craigslist. Now, I will go ahead and say this is not a method that works anymore because a lot of things have changed. Uh, Craigslist has gotten stricter on how they allow people to post ads. And I do still have my ticket company, but I make my money in other ways with the ticket company. But... The long and the short of it is I discovered by looking at all the websites on Craigslist that were selling tickets, not individual people, but there were websites with links that they all had the same tickets. 
it was really crazy to me when I made that realization because every single ticket company, there were hundreds of them. They couldn't have had the exact same tickets on the exact same row. There aren't enough seats on a row to justify that. So what did I do? Well, I started reaching out to these individual ticket websites and I started asking questions. I emailed a bunch of people and eventually somebody answered me. And they told me about this big conglomeration of in the ticket industry where basically you buy into them and you get access to all of the tickets that they have. And then you have a website where you sell the tickets, but the larger company handles the payment processing, the shipping, the actual inventory of the tickets. And it's basically just a cool internet marketing trick. And so I didn't realize it that day, but that I discovered this and started firing off these emails, but I was reverse engineering. I was taking a proven method that people had that worked and I was learning how to do it myself. And so at that point, I had some options. The options were to either take this information that I had learned and say, oh yeah, that sounds like a good thing somebody can do. Or I could have taken that information and decided, you know what, this is what I am going to do. And I love sports and I thought this was a cool niche for me to get into. It involved a lot of stuff that I love. I Still to this day, if I sell Super Bowl tickets or I sold some tickets recently to the national championship game for college football. When I make those sales, I think it's cool that someone is in that event because I have made a way for them to get there through my website. So I think it's cool, but I had a decision to either say, oh yeah, this is something I want to get into and drop it or to decide, is this something that I really want to do? And so instead of coming up with reasons that it wouldn't work, I decided I would make it work. And that is going to be something that when you want to start online business, you are going to run into. In your own head, you're going to be your worst enemy. You're going to say, well, I don't have the money to, to start a website. I don't know how to do marketing. I don't know how to do graphic design. I don't know how to do any of these things that an online business is going to require. But you have to do what I did. You just have to make it work. So what are some what are some ways that you can make it work? Well, to break free, you must fully commit. If you decide today, if you decide right now while you're watching this video that you want to break free from the rat race, then you can do it. If you take it half-heartedly and you say, eh, maybe, maybe I'll do this, maybe I won't, then I can guarantee you unless it falls into your lap magically or through nothing but luck, you're not going to do it. You have to make the decision. And once you make the decision, the next step is you have to be on the lookout for the opportunity. An opportunity will come your way. For me, I was looking for tickets for a football game and the opportunity came. But if I was not aware of the fact I was looking for an opportunity, I might have just said, oh, that's weird, they all kind of have the same tickets. But that's not what I did. I said, hmm, they have the same tickets. Let me see how I could possibly capitalize on this or start my own business. So not only do you have to be on the lookout for the opportunity, but when the opportunity comes, you must seize it. My entire life would be dramatically and drastically different if I did not seize the opportunity that I had. And now, I'm the type of person, when I see opportunities, I, I seize them. It, it's what I do. Probably even too much to where sometimes I get overloaded committing to too many things. But the next one is, you, you know, I always like in at the beginning of the year, uh, the first day of January, January 1st, New Year's, there will be people who will post the memes on social media or whatever it might be. And they'll say things like, Oh, you don't even know what's going to happen this year. Uh, you know, Forget all the haters. Forget all my haters. This year, I'm going to do me. And it just always strikes me as kind of funny that people walk around with this idea that they have people who are out to get them all the time. But at the same time, there is a grain of truth to that. Whenever you have a good idea you bring up to people, it seems like they always want to shoot it down. They want to say, well... 
you know, you don't have enough money to do it. Oh, what about the stability that comes with a job? Let me talk to you about stability with a job. That's the number one thing you hear when you want to venture out and be a, become an entrepreneur, especially if it's online or if it involves investments or anything like that, is people are always so quick to say, oh, what about the stability of, of your job? Let me ask you guys a question. What was the most stable job in the United States in 1997? I'll give you a second. Okay, if you don't know what it is, and this may not be a conclusive fact, but I think you will all probably agree, the safest job in America in 1997 was Blockbuster Video Manager. If you were a manager at Blockbuster, you had it made. You dominated the industry. Every little video store that popped up, you destroyed. And you were always on the cutting edge of technology. You had DVDs when DVDs started, when VCRs first came out and people didn't have them. You rented them to people. They were always on the cutting edge of the technology, but they weren't on the cutting edge of the delivery. So when Netflix popped up and someone decided, hey, I can put a, a DVD inside of a case and I can mail it to someone and they don't have to go to the video store, Blockbuster would have laughed at that. But yet, that's just what happened. So, like I said, there is no job that was more secure. Jobs are not stable. If you work for someone else, you do not have stability. And yes, in the business world, there's also instability. The truth is, really, in, in our jobs or in our incomes, we have no true stability that is infallible. There's always something that can happen. That's why we encourage you to come up with multiple streams of passive income. So once you find the opportunity, you seize the opportunity, you don't listen to the haters or the people that doubt you, the next thing is you have to give it everything you've got. I researched night and day figuring out the best way for me to sell tickets. I was looking at the way that the other people on Craigslist were selling tickets and I was coming up with my own ways to do what they were doing better. I'll just go ahead and tell you, at one point, I was posting 800,000 ads a day on Craigslist for tickets. That's an astronomical number. And if you would have told me the first day I started that I would ever get to where I was that big, I would have told you you were crazy. But yet, even though I didn't see the end of where I was going, I gave it everything my whole entire time that I was getting the business started and eventually it paid off. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that there's something in here that has, has touched your mind in a way that says you can do this because you can do this. You can become an online business entrepreneur. You can be someone who quits your job one day. You walk in and of course politely and professionally. I don't, I would not want you to just walk in and you know, throw your computer on your boss's desk and say, I quit, I'm doing my own business. That's not what I did. I worked out a, a, a notice when it was time for me to quit and I didn't leave my employer high and dry. You never want to burn bridges. But one day, if you follow these steps and you keep watching our channel, you come back for Freedom Fridays and all the rest of the videos we do, you can get to the point where one day you're able to walk into your boss's office, look your boss in the eyes and say, I've enjoyed working here, but it's time for me to move on and do my own business. And you know what? Your boss will be upset when you're leaving because I'm sure you're a good employee, but he will understand. He will understand because unless you're talking to the owner of the company, your boss thinks the same thing. No one wants to work for someone else. They just don't. People have certain callings that they might be willing to sacrifice money for to, to do something, say, if you work for a charity or something like that. But no one wants to be told what to do and to make someone else money. That's not, that's not how we're wired. So every Friday, I hope you come back for our videos and just a little bit about what we're going to be talking about on these Freedom Friday videos tips for online business opportunities, lessons on how to reverse engineer another business and use it yourself. 
inspiration for you to bust out of the daily rat race to become an online entrepreneur, and tools that will help you achieve all of your business goals, all of your online business goals specifically. So please go ahead, click subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell so you can get alerts when we have new videos. And, you know, we want you to be successful. We want you to become a successful online business owner. So if you stick with us, we can help you make it happen. So until next time, get out there and make some money.